Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Missouri here. It's the 17th of June, 2022, with your weekly economic update. And I am going to add a brief stock market end of week snapshot, although it's still early in the session on Friday. So, folks, in front of you is the um, PWA macro index, and we did tick down a Titch couple two three points here this last week to 10.87. Um, we're still not experiencing what we consider recessionary conditions or conditions that would suggest odds favor a recession going forward as opposed to ongoing expansion. However, the trend is not good, as you can see here. And what we're seeing anecdotally, we're seeing lots of companies pop up with announcements of hiring freezes, layoffs to come, et cetera. Guidance from a number of places that voices concerns about the overall economic setup going forward. And as you'll see here in a minute, waning sentiment and so on. So again, while our assessment at the moment still says that we're not bracing for recession in 2022. We seem to be moving that direction, not everywhere. As you'll see in a moment, there are some areas of strength and areas of support that are notable and worth considering. So we don't want to put the cart in front of the horse and begin making recession calls uh, before they're due. We will get to one and it may very well be uh, within the next uh, year to year and a half or so by our estimation right now, or it could be sooner than that if certain things continue to deteriorate as they have of late. Picking a handful out of the 46 inputs to our index, once again, we'll look at mortgage purchase apps, which believe it or not, actually rose week over week. So there you have something we haven't seen much of of late, and that is a rise in mortgage purchase applications to the tune of an 8.15% week over week rate of change. However, building permits rolled over pretty hard this last month, uh, negative 14% rate of change. And that's across both single family and multifamily housing. Multifamily has been holding up stronger of late. And same thing with permits, which doesn't bode well for future housing starts, of course, and that was down on a 7% rate of change basis. So while we had an uptick in the high frequency mortgage purchase apps uh, in the monthly numbers on the permits and starts for housing, not so good. Consumer confidence uh, cannot overstate how ugly the University of Michigan sentiment index is, as you can see, lower than it's ever been. Believe it or not, much lower than the bottom during the COVID shutdown. The Langer index, which comes out weekly, is very low as well. Conference boards, of course, different set of questions. And as you can see, it's holding up much better. But by and large, clearly, consumers are very concerned about their go forward prospects amid still a pretty tight, pretty strong labor market, notwithstanding what I just said a minute ago about announced layoffs and hiring freezes, but overall still pretty strong. And you're going to see that in another indicator here in a second, but suffice to say that this is, you know, these are, you know, recessionary level and some consumer confidence numbers. When you look at the university of Michigan survey, for sure. The NFIB monthly survey optimism kind of held roughly where it was last month down just a little bit. Hiring plans actually jumped six points in the survey. So that would be a positive, as I just mentioned. However, CapEx plans, you know, plans to expand their businesses actually continues to decline. So again, continued downward trend here. Overall optimism kind of flat on the month. Interesting. Hiring plans picking up. Of course, that typically would be a good sign for economic prospects going forward. Industrial production, another area of relative strength, you know, down a little bit in terms of the year over year rate of growth, but still up 5.8%, 0.2% on a month on month basis. Of course, again, the rate of change was down a bit, but you'd have to, you'd have to say this is still a pretty good look for industrial production as we sit here today. Capacity utilization ticked up just a little bit here. So companies are running at about 79% of capacity or factories, I should say. 
Commercial and industrial loans rose a tick. So on net, that would be considered positive in terms of uh, prospects for the economy going forward. The um, CAS freight index, very important indicator for us, actually rose. Nice pop here in the, uh, in the actual shipments index and actually finally rolling over a little bit, suggesting that maybe we're seeing little rays of sunlight in terms of the um, you know, supply chains and transportation issues. And we are beginning to see that as I've reported to you here recently in recent you know, ISM surveys and so on. But I should mention some regional manufacturing reports have been coming out and they are not good and they don't bode well for the future ISM surveys. But with regard to shipments, as you can see, the CAS data shows an increase and a slight decrease, decrease in terms of uh, in terms of cost, which of course would be optimistic relative to uh, to the inflation outlook. And then speaking of the inflation outlook, market based expectations as represented by inflation swaps, as you can see, they've rolled over pretty hard over the last week. And so again, that's a sign from a market based perspective that inflation may begin to roll over a bit. And of course, this would reflect generally waning or slowing macro conditions for sure. The Bloomberg Commodity Index coming off the boil here a bit as well. It doesn't bode well in terms of the growth outlook, right? But uh, from an inflation perspective, although we're still really, really high and we still do like commodities on a go forward basis. And I'm going to give you a little more support for that here in a second. Taking a look at copper rolling back over as well. And again, of course, that's also reflected in what I just showed you in the Bloomberg Commodity Index. Uh, still concerns over China and their COVID policies, although the Chinese market is having a good, good day this morning. But that's more around, um, looks like they're lightening up on, on some of their regulatory crackdowns on tech companies. Uh, the news this morning was that um, Alibaba's IPO of Ant Financial that we thought was dead months ago. It looks like that's about to be revised and so forth. So there's hope that, that the Chinese markets and the Chinese economy are about to come around. And we've made quite the case that for political reasons, we do think that COVID zero will be pragmatically abandoned. Going into the second half of the year, absolutely could be wrong. Yeah, but that a lot of stimulus is gonna to come to bear on the Chinese economy. And, and keep in mind, folks, we're talking about the second largest economy in the world. So that potentially could be the kind of support globally that keeps this more in that mid-cycle slowdown framework as opposed to being on the precipice of the next recession, so to speak. One more thing for you provided by Saxo Bank in their morning podcast this morning. And they talked a little bit about China's zero tolerance policy, in their view that could continue into next year, which of course, you know, would be bearish for commodities and so forth. The London Metals Exchange Index is in the red, but they're also showing you here uh, the actual inventories across aluminum, copper, nickel, zinc, and so forth. So again, really, really waning supply. And of course, you know what happens to price if you have demand against a low supply backdrop. Then they do something that we've done here for you from time to time on the blog and talk about what goes into things like EV batteries, right? Copper, you know, silicon, titanium, aluminum. Again, we like the base metals, uh, you know, nickel and so forth. Electrical traction motors, right? Copper, solar PV technologies, copper and silver. We've talked about that. We do own silver as well. Wind turbines, copper within what they call the hydrogen economy, electrolysis and fuel cells. You know, there's your copper, nickel, etc. So yeah, this is one of the areas. How many times have I said that here on this video? If, if I had to create a short list for things to be bullish about for multiple years going forward with lots of volatility and lots of ups and downs for sure, Copper would be right near the top, if not at the top of that list. Okay, so let's do the market. So we'll start with the very short term, the 60 minute, 60 day chart. Um, the, I've extended this falling wedge even lower, right? Uh, I guess you could do this as well when you take in the gap up this morning. So we gap nicely, futures overnight, we're up a bunch all night long. I mentioned the Bank of Japan non-decision earlier today, and you can see that that 
had a lot to do with overnight futures action, but we pretty much given up that pop. And as I speak to you, the S&P is down 15 basis points. NASDAQ is still up a little bit, but even when the S&P was up a bunch, the breadth was terrible. Uh, just about every sector, uh, you name it, except for technology, uh, was down on the day. Although early on, most things were up, but as the market came back down and then came back up, there, there was maybe a handful of sectors, but I'm looking at industrials are down over half a percent. Even staples are down half a percent. Materials are down oh, two thirds of a percent and on and on. Financials are down and so on. So even when the market was up, as I just said, the majority of the sectors were down. So that's a real negative breath day. Um, so I've been making a big deal over the last week or two about the fact that today is one of the biggest options expiration dates ever, right? And from what I understand, it rivals March 20th of 2020. And that was right when that bear market bottomed for good. But the key difference between here and there is that the Fed was actually looking to ease aggressively monetary policy. And there was a tremendous amount of fiscal stimulus being brought to bear as well. Well, we have none of that at this point. All we have is a whole bu bunch of puts that are about to expire today and a whole bunch of hedging among the put dealers, which would be short positions that will need to be covered, you know, today or and or, you know, next Tuesday after expiration. So it makes some sense to me, as I've continued to say, that a pretty good pop you know, could occur right in here, you know, later today toward the close, perhaps into next Tuesday, and then we'll have to see what happens. Now, of course, that short covering could be met by massive selling. I mentioned one potential whale that could sell a tremendous amount of stocks this morning in the morning note. If you didn't get a chance to read that note, please do. So um, there's nothing about the setup that I've talked about other than real potential for a pretty substantial pop. Something that, you know, in theory could gain the kind of momentum to give us that, you know, bear market rally that we've been calling for that we got a bunch of. We started calling for that here. It just never got quite to our, to our target. I've mentioned that 3,500 makes a lot of sense to us as the ultimate bottom for this market. But as macro conditions continue to wane, uh, you know, one would say that's going to have the Fed ease off the tightening pedal. Well, perhaps, but if inflation remains persistent and pernicious, that's going to be really difficult for the Fed to do. We have a Fed now who's talking about almost nothing but inflation is the problem. The implication there is that while I still think there is a Fed put under this market at some level, they don't want to talk about it. And it's not going to be as elevated as it was any time over the last several years. So the Fed has to let this market go down. And 3,500 is, is down. I mean, that's a 30% decline, which is a big bear market outside of a recession. Now, again, I think I'm repeating myself, but if recession fears begin to mount, you'll see treasuries rally, you'll see market interest rates come down, and you'll see inflation expectations, as I just showed you, roll over even harder. But we think that inflation getting down to the 2% target is really a non-starter from here, unless you have a deep recession. So we don't know that we're gonna have a Fed that's gonna be easing off the pedal much while wow, you know things continue to contract if that's what they continue to do back to the charts here i have to tell you this is a pretty constructive looking short-term chart right it's got what you know what we tend to favor you know if we want to be bullish and that's these patterns now of course you got to have a breakout and you got that this morning but it's looking like a failed breakout you, know, you break out of here and it could be something special but folks absolutely unequivocally we could roll down through here you know, break some ice and continue to go right down. So there's never any certainties when it comes to this stuff. There's just patterns and probabilities. On the uh, one-year daily chart, we still have, you know, a, a, an okay looking divergence here on the RSI relative to price that's just been breaking down through these levels, right? Um, but, you know, this continues and you're not going to have what I talked about here a couple days ago is a MACD that's turning up and giving you a, you know, a nice bullish 
um, divergence there to, to begin thinking that you're going to get an upside breakout. I mean, again, we could see a late session rally. I, I think it would be mostly mechanical, and that would be all these shorts covering today. If the market continues to, to just basically fall into the close, then that would be a next Tuesday event. Make no mistakes, these shorts have to be covered. But whether or not the market pops depends on how much selling is waiting to sell into that. And what happens in terms of you know, the hedging that's being rolled out into the future, you know, how close to the money is it and so forth. That all has a lot to do with what the options dealers will immediately do. So when I talk about that big gamma exposure and the potential for a pop, it could be substantial, but the sustainability of that, if we get it at all, is beginning to, uh, to come into question. But again, we'll, we'll wait and see. Could definitely be a pop that gathers some steam and some momentum. Uh, keep in mind, again, we have some waning macro conditions that, that are showing up in lower inflation expectations. You know, you could see uh, a real peaking in treasury yields and they begin to come off the boil. And who knows, with all this pessimism out there, that could be enough to get people to rush back in and give us something more sustainable to the upside. Make no mistake. If we're right and we get, we're going to continue to ultimately meander down here to 3,500 or possibly below, well, it's going to come, you know, with big moves, volatile moves in both directions. That essentially is what really characterizes the action inside of legitimate bear markets. And we're definitely in a legitimate bear market right here. The signals that I've been showing you in the weekly and monthly charts, those haven't changed at all. They continue to be bearish. They continue to point to lows lower than here. They continue to point right now to that 3,500 level. So I'd just be showing you exactly what I keep showing you in just about every video. So maybe I'll save that again for next time. So folks, lots to parse here. A lot of work to do for us in terms of keeping abreast of what's going on. Got to stay open-minded to all possibilities, and we will. And right here, we have to continue to hedge against you know what the potential is in this market to the downside thank you as always for watching and listening hope you have a wonderful weekend talk to you again soon bye bye